guys! Today I'm going to talk about Kinder. With my help, you could become all powerful. I am a Mara. Do not resist. I am your strength. For the light on! For the light on! It's from 1982, and it's Peter Davison as the Doctor, Janet Fielden as Tegan, Sarah Sutton as Nyssa, and Matthew Waterhouse as Adric. Not only that, but Richard Todd's in it. He's a great actor. He was in The Dam Busters, lots of other great films, lots of army films. And also Nerese Hughes is in. She was famous for The Liver Birds, as well as a lot of other things like The District Nurse and stuff. Peter Davison's first season, season 19, it's special because at the time, this was like the first year of a new Doctor and Tom Baker had been playing the Doctor for seven years and it seemed a really long time. So it was like a special event really having a new Doctor and season 19 was really special somehow. It seemed new and fresh. It's interesting because season 18, Tom's last, the theme was about age and being old and things decaying and stuff. And this, season 19, the themes about new, like a rebirth. That was kind of the theme of the stories of season 19. And this one, Kinder, the plot's about kind of, it's all symbolism and symbolic stuff. Christianity, Buddhism, reincarnation, all stuff about the Bible. It's about this planet getting colonised and the, the tribe uh, kind of... The, they think they're up primitives, but they're not. So some of the characters have a nervous breakdown because they get possessed by the Mara. It's a very mature story. Loads of symbolism and very symbolic. I think season 19's Doctor Who at its most mature. I used to think this story was confusing as a kid, but when you re-watch it, you, you appreciate it more as you get older. Here's season 19 Blu-ray box set. Really good. It's interesting because um, although it's better picture quality and sound, with it being 1980s, it's, uh, it doesn't stand out as well as the previous box set I was on about, the John Pertway Season 10 box set, because that was stories in the 70s and there was kind of more to improve technically, like picture quality. But uh, it's still better than DVD, Blu-ray, even 1980s Doctor Who. You can see a big difference. It's interesting that um, Nyssa isn't really in this story because at the time the th when they were writing the story they thought the Doctor would only have two companions. But he, he really has three companions. So that to write Nyssa out. So you only see her at the beginning where she doesn't fail very well. and. She stops inside the TARDIS for the rest of the story. And then you say you briefly at the end, greeting the other companions when they finish the adventure. To make up for that though, you, you get Nerea's use and she would have been a, a good companion actually. She works really well with Peter Davison. It's a shame really that the, the drop the bollocks, they should, have, they should have had her instead of Nyssa because she worked much better. Davison's Doctor's really underrated. He, he's especially good in this story. I like his expression. You see some of the cast going mad and they're saying weird stuff to him. And he has a perplexed expression on his face. Really good. This story is mostly to do, really, with Janet Fielden. It's her story, even though she's not really in episode three. Her acting ability, it's excellent, this story, because she kind of gets kind of possessed. And there's surreal moments where you go inside her mind and it's all dark. And she's seeing these strange figures. And the lighting and visual effects are excellent with these scenes. It's definitely a best moment. Uh, the Mara comes back in the next season for Snake Dance, uh, although it's a, still a very good story, it's not as good as Kinder, and Tegan's uh, getting possessed and stuff in that as well. So uh, really good pair of stories. 
unfortunately, Matthew Waterhouse is in this story, and although he's not that bad, really, he, he is one of the Waker's companions. You don't like him, Bones, do you? Hey, I can't stand bloody Adric. He can't bloody act. He can't bloody expression in his bloody face. Fucking hell, he can't even fucking walk, right? <laughs> There's some good cliffhangers as well in this story. I especially like the cliffhanger of episode 2, where they're going to open this box. When they take the lid off, you hear them screaming. You wonder what the hell's in the box. And then you have to wait another week. The beginning of episode 3, you find out it's just like this jack-in-the-box thing. There's a really funny character who's having a nervous breakdown. and There's some brilliant over-the-top scenes with them. He doesn't have uh, go over the top. I like the bit where they make and paint their figures. One of them accidentally tears one. And he, he goes really potty. Saying, you can't mend people. <laughs> he, he's really uh, over the top. It is me. It's a drop of blue. You silly. Can't mend people. Can't mend people. Can't mend people. There's so lots of good characters in this story. I like the, the wise old woman. She's really good. I like the ending of episode 3 as well. There's like a surreal moment. You, you say this clock counting down. It's flicking down to um, 12 o'clock. Everyone's going crazy in this uh, surreal moment. It's a very weird story, this bugger. There's a funny story about Matthew Waterhouse. He went up to Richard Todd and started giving him advice on his acting. Matthew Waterhouse of all people. And the director gave them a right bollocking, saying you're not supposed to do that. Hey, fancy telling Richard Todd how to bloody act. I would have told the little bastard to piss off. <laughs> It's interesting on the Blu-ray, you can have new special effects. So like when you say the snake, instead of it looking like a silly rubbery type of snake, you have CGI snake. Looks a lot better. Hey, that bloody snake looks soft as bloody shit. So overall I thought this story was excellent. It, um, it's really symbolic, it mixes loads of stuff out of the Bible, Garden of Eden, Reincarnation, loads of stuff. So I think it's one of Peter Davison's best stories as the Doctor. So out of ten, I think I'd give it a nine. Nine out of ten, I really enjoyed it. But to do think the ones do like it. I'm get the bugger out. Daddy Adric was in it. He spoke it. Okay, everybody, bye. Subscribe. See you next time. Just like that.